Hi everyone, good evening. I'm Rachel Auslander with the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, TakeMeFishing.org. Uh, thank you all for being here and thank you to our online audience. Um, I am here to introduce one of my favorite people, <laughs> uh, Tiffany Witt Risch. She is better known as Snooky Fishing and she was born and raised in still lives in the Richmond, Virginia area. So she is local. We are here actually at the West Marine store in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So uh, we are all relatively local being in Virginia. Um, she's one of TakeMeFishing.org's amazing women making waves ambassadors. So I've gotten to spend a lot of time with her over the past few years. She is also a great patient, I know firsthand, teacher uh, to go fishing with. And um, I know you'll learn a lot from her tonight. She has uh, been a freshwater angler her whole life. And um, I will turn it over to you. Snooki, go awesome. ahead. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. so much for being here. So thank you, everyone, for coming. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, online people, for supporting from virtual. Um, Today we're going to talk a little bit about drop shot fishing and I'm just going to keep it real basic for you guys one on one. But I do want to know, has anybody in the audience um, here fished drop shot? No. Awesome. This is great. So drop shot fishing is really unique to me um, because the whole idea of learning the concept started whenever my friend Brad decided to take me fishing at Lake Anna on the hot side. And I had told him, I was like, I feel kind of like I'm in this zone of fishing the same stuff. And I was still catching fish, but I wanted to challenge myself. So I said, today I'm not, I'm giving you my tackle box and you have to teach me something new. So he said, we're gonna learn how to drop shot fish. So there is two ways to drop shot fish um, that I learned and that I personally use. And that is the open hook and the weedless style. And the open hook is um, kind of like a, easier way for me I think when we we're first starting out to learn and I'm going to show you how to do that so let me get we're going to use this a little bit okay um, we're going to use this line just so that you guys can see it a little bit better and then I'm going to pass around what I actually use on my tackle so what I'm going to do is get you all set up with um, this open hook and so we're going to send this line through and I'm gonna do what I call a drop shot knot. We're just gonna tie this like here. Send it back through. Get that nice and tight. And I know you guys can't see it very well so I will pass it around for you. Get that golden. And then we are going to take another one like this on this line for you guys to see being passed around. And so on the drop shot line, you can see that I have, this would be kind of symbolizing and y'all can laugh at my drawings, but um, we've got our line up here and this is gonna be my braided line right above where this double uni knot is. And that's gonna connect right to my leader line. And my leader line is going to then hold the hook and the weight. And there's different types of knots that you can use. The knot that I prefer is the polymer knot to tie on the hook where the bait is gonna be held. And we wanna make sure that when we tie that knot, we pull it really tight so that that knot is gonna hold that hook at almost like a 90 degree. Um, and then we're gonna put the bait on and then have our line from the uh, hook to the weight. The weight is gonna be different types of weights and I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, my leader line is typically two to four inches if I'm fishing shallow, like they're spawning right now. So that would probably be somewhere where I would start and see what that strike zone looks like. Um, and then if I was fishing in a pond and it was like not this time of year, a little bit maybe in the winter, I would fish it with a little bit of a longer leader line. So let me get that sent out to you guys and I will show you. So here is one of the rigs that I have set up pre. Um, and you can see this is going to be our drop shot weight. And our drop shot weight is really unique on this one. It's a little bit more advanced because I don't know if online can hear this, but it's got a rattle in it. It might be a little hard to hear, but this rattling weight is one of my new favorite techniques. Um, and I will just put that back 
on here we go got so many out here so on this line if you guys can see this you've got this little keeper right here you stick the line through the keeper and you pull it up with that little tag and you can see that that weight's not going to go anywhere and you can kind of hear it rattle a little bit now some people like to leave it like that I actually like to take and tie it around just like almost like you would tie a tennis shoe and just pull it through like that and why we do that is because this little keeper right here that holds the line is actually going to break off so if I I'm fishing this and I get it stuck between two rocks. I'll use my hand as an example. Um, and I'm pulling and I'm pulling. Eventually this line is gonna snap if I pull it hard enough. So I will only lose the weight, which is really nice. I won't lose my bait, nor will I lose the hook or the rest of the leader, which is really cool. And this is um, really unique too, because it's got a little piece on here where you can slide this through and do the same thing up top where the hook is. And again, that's not going to pull unless I yank it really hard, but I don't want to set that hook in my thumb, so we're not going to do that. And then to put the bait on, I would take a nose hook this style on the open hook like we were talking about on the drawing. So it's going to sit like that. Put my weight back on and I'll show you in the tank, our very small tank today, how that works. And we have shortened this just a smidge. And for my leader line, it's going to change based on how deep I want to fish, as well as the line from the hook right here. Tighten that up. And you can see, obviously, my break this piece off since I shortened it. You can see how that is going to move. And that, that weight is just going to sit right there on the bottom, and there's going to be rocks and debris down there. And you just jig it just up and down, bounce it like that. And that's all that it takes to get that strike for that bait. So I'm going to actually put a little piece of tape on this so that we don't get anybody hooked. And I'm going to pass it around for you all to look at real closely. And that way, if you have any questions, you can ask me. This up. And we'll start with you. And the last person who gets it, you can just set it on the floor and we'll get it at the end. So that is our open hook style. Now we have our weedless style. The weedless style is pre rigged right here. And this is kind of what it looks like. And as you can see, I did it a little bit longer since I'm not going to put it in the tank. Um, I've got my braided line which I use right here and I have that right here if you're interested in learning more about that but that is going to be the 15 pound smackdown braid and this is going to be my fluorocarbon and it's going to be 10 pound and then I've got my hook and I've rigged it so that it's weedless so you can see the best way to explain weedless to people who aren't familiar with that term is just to show that I'm not hooking my Finger. So if I'm bouncing this through structure, it's not going to snag up on me. And to do that, I'll show you guys how I rig this. And this hook is really nice because it's got like a little stopper or keeper. I'm just going to take it like this, send it right down through the nose, spin it up, turn it so it's like that. Maybe do it a little straighter next time and then send it back through. And so that's going to show you how I get that on there like that. Same thing with the weight. The weight has a keeper as well on this one. And these are called cylinder weights. You can see the difference between this one versus like I've got up here um, the bell, the cylinder, or the round. I personally don't like fishing the round. Um, I would rather stick with the bell or cylinder just depending on what type of structure I'm fishing. And if you're fishing more of a, a bell style, I feel like that would be really good for like um, doing 
I guess best way to explain structure because I'm trying to help you guys um, like any kind of wood or like rock banks kind of like a point type thing um, cylinder for grass and then the round I feel like it really gets hung up a lot so I would stick with if you're fishing like a sandy bank that would be a good good place to start with that um, and those are those different styles so on this one I'm just going to put back on the cylinder weight because that seems to be my go-to favorite and got that nice and tight and I'm not going to tie it like I did the one that I just sent around so that you guys can if you want to pop it off and pop it back in you can see how that works and this is this one there you go you. you're welcome and just be careful with that hook it is um, rigged to be weedless but it is very 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 sharp um, for the kids so just be careful with that do we have any questions so far before I keep moving on no okay <laughs> just making sure y'all are staying with me so one thing that I wanted to talk about because y'all are getting it passed around is these swivel twist free hooks um, you can see my amazing drawing right here um, it's an octopus hook and basically what I really like about this is when I'm casting out I don't have to worry about my line getting all tangled up um, and you'll see that on that hook right there with the two connectors it's really also a great hook to use because it has um, that quick release so if I break off a weight I can just put it tie another one on and hook it right back with these little connectors so you can see those I don't know if online can see that we can try <laughs> and that's just a really good finesse style hook to use Now another way you can fish these would be to do kind of like a wacky style. And for the wacky style, I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger weight and bait so that you guys can see it. There's this. Here. So the wacky style is gonna be more like this. I don't know how well y'all can see that in the water. It's kind of hard with this one, but it's just basically going to flutter, so it'll come down and back up, and that'll be how it, it moves. And I'll hook this one for you guys with some tape so that y'all can see that as well. Do the moving. If I can get it to move right, it's not moving the way I want it to. So kind of like that flutter, you can see how that does that. And yeah, we're just going to keep safety first. Make sure you guys don't hook yourselves. These hooks are very, very sharp. These are the Gamagatsu hooks. Let's see if maybe a little bit more dry. when I'm using all these baits and trying to put um, new line on or, or correct something that might have gotten damaged throughout the, the fishing trip, I like to use my cutters. And there's all different kinds of cutters that you can use, but I have found that my line cutters are amazing for multiple reasons. Get this sent out to you guys. That way you can see it. There you go. Um, and that's these. And I like these because they can clip to my pants, my life jacket, whatever I'm wearing. Um, I can either cut this way or I can cut through any kind of line. I can show you on this. See if I can't hook it somehow. Show you guys. This just makes it really nice because I can put this on a lanyard or, like I said, have it hooked on my life jacket and it cuts through pretty much any kind of line. It doesn't matter how thick it is. These things are amazing. So that is what I was using for those. 
And then if I wanted to um, talk to you guys a little bit more about some safety things that I do as well. Um, so on the water, off the water, whether that's shore fishing, fishing in my kayak, fishing out on a boat, um, there's a couple things that you will see on my social media that I do not leave home without, and that is my first aid kit. Um, my first aid kit is very unique. It's by AnglerAid, um, but it has all kinds of different things in here. It has, let's get this out. It's got everything from your standard first aid to angler spray for any kind of like cuts, bruises, anything that I feel as though um, I need to cater to is in here, as well as, let me see if it's in, pull it out. I've got a flashlight in here whistle, pretty much everything I need. They also come, um, some of the kits come with like uh, super glue as well as like the rings for your boat um, if you needed to do any kind of repairs while you're out on the water. So these are really great things that I will not leave, nor will I leave the boat without Benadryl. Benadryl is always a big one for any of you allergy sufferers like myself. How many of you have a first aid kit on your boat? Said how many of you have a first aid kit on your boat? Raise hands. Awesome. Looks like some of us might need to get some. Um, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. So Nicole wants to know, and here, Nicole wants to know when do you use open hook versus a seedless hook? What structures? She wants to know to, when to use open hook versus what? I think she meant weedless. Weedless. <laughs> Yeah, so I would use an open hook in open water because an open hook is gonna snag up a little bit more versus if I was doing like a weedless style, I can punch that through grass or send it through um, some structure of like logs or rocks, that sort of thing. Is it all dependent on the type of fish you're going after? I'm all, this is mainly bass fishing is what I would do this for, yeah. And Bruce wants to know which way do you find works best for you? Bruce. Bruce, for you guys that don't know, is my fishing partner. Um, <laughs> and Bruce taught me most of this stuff too. He helped me with a little bit of Vance. So Bruce wants to know which way works best for me. Um, I would say mostly the weedless style just because I get kind of frustrated a little bit when it's getting snagged up and stuff. And Bruce has a tendency to catch more fish than I do. So I have to keep up with him um, on the boat, which is kind of fun. So I would stick with like the weedless style for sure. And Nicole wants to know what baits do you like best? What baits? So I have some baits here, um, just some real simple stuff, keeping it basic for you guys. And that would be the Deep Creek Bluers. I've got a couple of different ones that I can pass around. But I, for some reason, seem to like the smaller baits. I haven't started exploring more with like creature baits or with the uh, larger trick worms. So much, so I will send these around for you guys that are in person. And of course, your black color, your uh, green pumpkin, all of that. Yes. Frogs, artificial pass frogs. Them. Yes, artificial frogs do work. So if you're gonna, are you talking about like top water fishing? Yeah, you could use that. Water, yes. Um, the jerking, yes. Yep, you could do some topwater fishing back up in the creeks, um, like, yeah, right when, like, first thing. Bass. Yes, for sure. Bruce also wants to know what color baits do you use the most? What color baits? I guess it just depends on the water, um, but I think the green pumpkin is usually my go-to. I also have a secret bait that he might be referencing. Um, it's like a chartreuse with a black flake. I call it, like, a char chartreuse, like, pepper color. Um, and Bruce does not like when I pull that out because I usually catch more fish than him. It kind of looks like this bait. Okay, those online, if you want to show it, kind of looks like that. There you go. Sometimes he'll actually take that out of my tackle box because he knows. <laughs> okay, cool. I will keep going with my safety tips then. Um, so some other things that I have learned along my journey of fishing is um, one thing that's kind of untraditional, I think, in tackle boxes and in first aid kits is a mirror. And I like this mirror because I can set it up to look in the mirror and if I 
hopefully knock on wood if we have any around here, um, hook myself like in the back of the head, back of the arm, somewhere back there. I can do this just to see like how bad it is to know whether to go to the ER or not or if I can pop it out myself with braid. Um, so a mirror is really important. It can also be used um, if you hit the sun to like reflect if you need help, which I think is a really cool uh, feature to have in your tackle box. Um, this is a very unique thing too that a lot of people ask me about is the bait sack. The bait sack is important to me, mainly because although I don't have kids, I have two dogs that fish with me all the time. They go kayak fishing or boating with me. And as you saw, when I pass the hooks around, they're super sharp. So this is a great tool to have. It just clips on your rod. Like so. And if this was had line on it, we could pull it out and I could show you that it has a little line keeper on the back and you can drop your bait in here. So if my dogs are like running around and they accidentally bump it, or if you have kids and the kids are playing, you can see that this, this won't hook the kids, which is really nice. So that's another safety thing that I would include on the boat. I think we've all kind of over the years talked about how important sun protection is and although I do do sun block and sun shirts like I'm wearing, I also think that a lot of times you'll notice when I'm fishing on social media I'll have like a, a tan line from here because I always pull my sleeves up. I just don't like the sleeves down by my wrist so a lot of times the tops of my hands are burnt so I, I just recently started using fish gloves which are really nice because they do help a lot of times with that, um, that sunburn as well as if you're fiddling and tying or if you are trying to pop off a bait and it pops back, this is going to protect your hand from getting hooked, which is really nice. And then I think lastly on my safety tips would be a pair of snips. People who know me know that a lot of times as we were setting up, you know, I've got a hook out and it just snags my jeans. Um, I'm always getting hooks around, so I think this is mainly important for if you accidentally hook yourself or an animal or something, you can clip the hook. Um, let me show you what this does. If I had the strength in my hands to do it. So that just snaps that hook. So if that hook was in me for any reason and I needed to cut where the barb was off to send it back through, if I couldn't get to the ER in time, these are a great tool to have on the boat. They can also be used for other things, but great pair of snips is always important to invest in. Um, I think lastly I'll show you one other thing for those of you who like to kayak and boat um, or if you have kids and you're playing around the shoreline they're fishing with you this is my cell phone case so it's by Yugo and I think what's really cool about this is when I put my phone in here I can text through it I can film through it and it floats and it's waterproof this is a waterproof zipper it also has a little bit of pocket in there if I wanted to bring like my wallet, keys, whatever. So this is another thing that I'll pass around for you guys to look at. Do you use dry bags? Those dry sacks at all. Do I use what? Dry sacks. Dry sacks? Like those big bags that have... Yeah, like a dry bag? Yeah, I have a couple of them and I do use them for like bringing extra clothes with me, which is another safety thing to do. Um, or if I'm filming out on the kayak, I might put my expensive like camera equipment, charters, anything basically that can't get wet, I'll put in there. So yes, I do, I do really like those. Those are a good thing to have. Yeah. Another question was uh, from online is when did you start kayak fishing? Yeah. So I started kayak fishing two and a half years ago, I think. And I have a, I have three kayaks actually. I have a Kubera kayak which is kind of more of a um, like platform type, and that's the one that my dog fishes on with me. I have a pedal drive, and I also have a Sea Ghost, which is more of your standard type kayak if I was to compare it to um, some others. And what do you find the benefits of kayak fishing, or do you just like being out there alone? I, I think it's my peace of mind and my time um, fishing has always been something to me that was really important from a mental health perspective. Those of you that know my story know that my papa passed away and that's what got me really engaged in fishing on this level. Although I'd always fished, I needed something to kind of help 
calm the nerves and like get me back on track with that. Um, so spiritually it was a lifesaver. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for fishing. So it means a lot to me. Um, and I just think that that being out on a kayak like that really does help give me that peace of mind. And I like to take my munchkins out, both my dogs. So it's a really cool time to be with the family and friends. Is there any other questions, Rachel? Okay. What about in the audience? The first kayak you mentioned, is that more like a fishing kayak then? All three that I have are fishing kayaks, are. yes. Okay, great. Um, where, like what, I have a 10 footer and I know like with my, I have a, like a platform on the top or where I sort of mess with the bait. Mm -hmm. Is yours like a sit-on? Is it a sit-in? Um, so I have a seat that's really unique. Um, I should have brought it with me. <laughs> but my seat folds down so I can stand up and fish if I want. It's like a platform. Or I can push it back up and sit in it and either sit in or adjust it to sit up higher. So I have multiple options with my seat. And I can get you more information on that. You know, if with the platform, is that still as stable, or I mean, I know kayaks are pretty stable, but I mean, is there more rock with it? I have a 70 pound dog that fishes with me and we have not flipped, knock on wood. <laughs> if that makes it a little bit more relatable. Um, but yeah, I've tried to flip it just for practice and it's been very difficult for me. So I do find those very sturdy. I will say that the sea ghost that sits more in the water, I think, than on top of the water, I feel a little bit more safer. And if you were a beginner, that's probably where I would start you is in that that Seagos 110 um, versus the Kabera, which is more of like a paddleboard type kayak. I mean, I am a Evo kayak, actually from Wisconsin. Yeah. Moved here, but anyway, did a lot of kayak fishing there, and waters are totally different here, so I'm still trying to find out. Very much so. One question from Bruce is, what equipment do you find most useful when you are kayak fishing? I would most important. most important. That's a very good question. Um, I, I'm a big gear girl. I like gadgets, so it's really hard to pick, but I think the most important would be the leash aspect. Um, leashes are very important because if I was to flip or if I set something down and it go overboard, a leash is going to make it so that I can grab it back. So maybe my leash for my paddle or for any kind of other equipment that I have would be my, my go-to, like number one. I always strap down everything just to make sure. Another question was, where is your favorite place to fish and what is the largest fish you have caught? So, <laughs> I see some head shaking and some, some interest. Okay, um, so do you want to know saltwater or freshwater? Saltwater would be cobia for me, um, and I don't remember the exact size of it, but I do know that it was pretty beastly. Um, so I'll have to get that information for you of the exact size. I don't want to fib to you, you know, how fishermen are. I caught a, I caught a bass, you know, <laughs> it's like, which way is it? Um, but then for, I think, freshwater, it would probably be a largemouth bass of six pounds. So that's, yeah, <laughs> thank you. That's my, my two that I think I would I would definitely reference. So, do we have any other questions for me? You guys are taking it easy on me. I like this. <laughs> so, if we um, were to just reference anything else that maybe I forgot with the drop shot, I would also say um, on this that it just depends on what exactly you want to fish for. If you're fishing for bass and you want to get the kids involved, I'm big on taking kids fishing. I would start them off with like a weedless style and just teach them to just kind of like let it, it drop down with a little bit of slack in the line and just like lightly pull it up and just keep doing that action. And I think with the kids too, they're really going to enjoy that, um, that rattling bait because that is going to increase your strikes. And I'm not sure if I quite sent one of these around, so we're going to do that for you guys. Oh, thank you. And they could hear it online. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so.
lights are here for you guys. For what? So I guess I can go back through how I have it set up, and this one actually is great. So I have my 15 pound Smackdown braid right here, and then I have a uni knot, and this is going to go to my 10 pound fluorocarbon, and this is gonna be a polymer knot to my hook, and then of course, right back down, same line, to my weight, if that helps. Hopefully I answered that question. <laughs> Do we have any random questions about fishing? I see a lot of kids, maybe. With those wackulars, do you use like all rings? I mean, I've seen some of those like on my Yes. Uh, you can. Um, you can also use a zip tie if you run out and you want to cut the zip tie. I've done that before um, if I run out of O-rings. But yes, you can use O-rings for that. Okay. All right. okay. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you and I are going to go fishing after this because you know a lot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll have to get together and do yes. something. Snooky Brad online wanted to know what length and power rod do you prefer when fishing a drop shot? Okay. Um, I have not started power fishing with it yet. Uh, that I think Brad's going to teach me that. That's, that's our next go-to. Um, but I think when it comes to... Well, remind me of the question. It slipped. And power rod do you prefer when fishing a drop shot? I think we'll reference back to the length being depending on where we're fishing and, and what time of year. If they're spawning, then it's going to be a shorter length. If they're going to be winter fishing, it might be a little bit deeper. Um, so I think that that's, that's how I would relate that. But then for the rod, I'm actually going to come back to Brad on that one and see what he thinks for um, fishing for power. I mean, right now we're doing a, a medium. So I think that that would be something that we could do. We've also got two rods back here that are great for drop shot fishing. I've got this one and this one. This one's more um, of our ladies series. And this is just going to be like a medium light combo that you guys could use. And you could do braid to mono and do the same setup that we did before. You want to see this? <laughs> I feel like one of those models <laughs> on the price is right. <laughs> Here we go. Do we have any other questions? What about bait, what about bait casters? Bait casters? Okay. So bait casters are great. Um, you can do drop shot fishing with those. What are you asking for specifically? Um, if they can handle maybe bigger fish, deeper water? Yes, all of the above. Okay, Because, right. I mean, do you actually need maybe a heavy, like a, instead of a medium light, like a heavy or a medium heavy? Do you need a heavy or a lot for both? Yeah, it just depends on what you're fishing. Um, if you're doing the drop shot, I like the the medium heavy, this one's a little bit light, but um, if you're taking kids out and they want to feel that that action on the tip mm -hmm. and just like for excitement to keep them interested, this would be a great rod to do it with. Um, but if you're going to be fishing like heavier crankbaits or swim baits, then yes, I would go with a heavier rod. Uh, Brad chimed in and said he agrees a medium action seven foot rod would be the perfect setup. Awesome. Uh, another question from Bruce, uh, how do you set the hook with a drop shot? That's a great question. So with the drop shot, I don't necessarily set the hook like I would if I was fishing um, like a Texas rig or something. I wouldn't just yank it. I would kind of just like slowly pull up on it. I don't, um, let me see if I have another one of those sticks. Yeah, I got this one. Um, so this is, leader obviously is a little bit long for this tank. But if I'm sitting there and I'm kind of just like bouncing it off the bottom and all of a sudden I get a strike, I'm just going to slowly kind of pull that up. And when I do, this hook is going to set in the fish's mouth. I wouldn't necessarily yank it because I feel like at that point you would miss your opportunity to set, have the hook set in the fish's mouth. Leave that just like that. It's gonna unswivel. 
Does that answer Bruce's question to his liking? I'm curious to see what his his reply would be for that. Oh yeah, of course. So um, for the people that are here, if you want, when um, the live feed is over, you guys can come up and I can show you how to do a few knot ties, um, as well as you can take a picture of this board if you want to take it home for your notes. And then online as well, we will provide that information as well as a couple um, knot tying TikToks and maybe some information on the actual uh, rattle shots, the hooks, and the baits as well. So that'll be good. I'll get all that information for you all. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> so Take Me Fishing also has a couple TikToks for knot tying as well. Um, and that'll be a good, good thing for you guys to reference. They also, on their Instagram story, I believe, it was this morning, um, did some underwater footage of fish um, striking at and being caught on the drop shot, which is really cool to see that underwater footage because that is not something that everybody gets to see. Any other questions for me? What is the most common fish you caught? The most common? Um, if you actually look in your book that we provided for you guys, um, which is this book right here for you online folks, Know Thy Fish, which is a great way for um, people to start identifying what they're catching. I would say bass is my number one. So if you look in here for largemouth bass, let's see what page they're on. These books are great for the kids as well. So page 37, if you flip to that, you can see and read just a little bit about the largemouth bass, which is a good, good thing to have. Another question, is the drop shot only for vertical fishing or can it be cast out? I can, I like to do both, but it just depends. Um, if I'm doing vertical fishing or horse, what was it? What was the question, Rachel? Uh, vertical fishing, I lost it. Is the drop shot it. only for vertical fishing or can it be cast out? Yes, I can cast it out from the shore. So that was a great question. Um, if I'm casting out from the shore, I might try to angle it a little bit, just depending on what structure is around me. Um, if there's trees or if I've got someone fishing beside me, I'm going to try to put that angle in. Um, awesome. I think we have hit just about all that I had prepared for you guys. Um, if you want to learn more about finesse fishing, and you, I know you guys, a lot of you said that you had already, um, that you weren't familiar with drop shot fishing. But if you do go out and test it and you find it very interesting, there's a couple books, and I will let you guys look through this um, after our live feed. And this just talks about the different styles of finesse fishing and how you can really relate it to if you were out on a boat and looking at your, your depth finder and that sort of thing. So this is a great book to read um, if you want to start advancing more on the drop shot. see any more questions online now so thank you so much Snooki for You're being welcome. here and the Virginia Beach West Marine store and for uh, talking to all of us both online and here in person we're so glad to see all of you came out tonight so thank you for being here um, we will like we said take some video to post of uh, all the knots and all the hooks and all the baits that Snooki had so those of you who couldn't actually see online or in the audience we will be able to post the close-up on that, um, as well as the board that has some more description. So thank you all for being here, and uh, thanks to West Marine for your partnership with Take Me Fishing. Yep, thank you guys. Be the first to see new videos. Keep us on your radar by clicking subscribe. And for more fishing tips, tricks, and how-to guys, check out our advice and how-to section on westmarine.com. Wishing you tight lines and good times.